All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Diane Griffin. I am, uh, I am uh, the curator of the Trans2, the second of two transgender themed shorts programs at our festival this year. And with me are two of the directors from that uh, program, um, Britt Fryer, who directed Across, Beyond, and Over, and Audrey Jean-Baptiste, who directed Fabulous. Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, welcome. Um, thank you both for your films. Um, one thing I would say at the start is, um, having, having reviewed it again last night, I love this program because I feel like it goes really deep into a bunch of different things. I actually am kind of um, kind of sad a little bit that we didn't also get Anita who directed, uh, um, I forget the title, the trans, transforming, tra translating beauty also here because that film was also um, really deep into the idea of trans ID identity and and beauty and and every and and everything that comes with that and from every every different angle it was a very exciting film um it, and so um but i also feel like um brit your film really um delved into um its own aspect of identity and how trans people treat each other and learn from each other, and you know, and learn how to live based on all of that stuff. And I love the the reconciliation that came at the end between your two characters, you and um, I'm terrible. Ryan, <laughs> you and Ryan. Yeah. Um, I loved how that developed. I loved that it was kind of meta. It felt like it was maybe planned to be like an introduction to a larger project. Yeah, I, I definitely thought about it as, um, you know, we were sort of just documenting the, the process so that we could write a narrative piece. Um, and since making this movie and actually going through the process of like cutting it and showing it, um, my interest in the narrative is lessened every day because I was sort of really happy um, with how the documentary about making the thing sort of turned out. Mm -hmm. um, I think it spoke to something that I, I wasn't consciously thinking about, which I think is, um, yeah, a much more interesting place than anything I could have, have, have imagined from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, actually, I think so too. Um, I was watching it with my wife and she was like, well, that was very meta. And I think, yeah, but I think that like what, what, it, what I loved about it was that um, I'm an, I have a, um, I have a creative writing degree in non creative nonfiction. And I think that that's often too, like the, 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 like the real stories that we have to tell the truth of our lives often has like a lot more um, nuance and, um, and uh, uh, resonances that are like just outside of what a narrative can do. Mm -hmm. So I was really, I, I, I thought your film was really rich in that way. Thank you so much. I'm glad glad that you saw that. And um, so, um, and Audrey directed uh, Fabulous, which is frankly one of the most beautiful things I've I've seen doing these programs. I just, from the cinematography to like what the film is about, um, is and and how it how the story was told. Um, it was just, it, I was just really, really moved by it. And I wanted to thank you for your film. Can you talk a little bit about, um, I guess uh, it's so general, but I guess I, so let's just make it completely general. Can you talk a little bit about um, how you came to this story um, and these char and these people to tell their story? Yes, it's funny because uh, at uh, the beginning, uh, I wrote a narrative movie. Mm -hmm. and uh, and i and the story of the character I imagined was really close to Lassandra, the main character of my movie and uh, when i i I did a casting to find someone to 
uh, to be the, uh, an actor in my movie. I met uh, Lassandra and then uh, it was crazy because uh, Lissandra had uh, so much in common with the character I imagined. It was like really crazy. And, um, and at the beginning we worked together uh, to do the narrative movie. Mm -hmm. And then the, there were so many uh, common points, so many things. Um, and and I, I talked to myself with my producer, so we have to do a documentary because uh, Lissandra didn't go back to French Guyana for real. And it, it's so much more interesting to film it uh, than to recreate it with a narrative movie. And uh, uh, I, I love narrative, I do narrative by the way, but, but uh, I, I, I decided to skip to, sorry, to, to change the, the, the narrative into a documentary. And uh, Lissandra was not so <laughs> enthusiastic at the beginning because uh, like, I, I think there, is, there are like two or three documentaries already on her, but in Paris and in the ballroom culture. So it's very different, but she was really uh, um, enthusiastic uh, to, to be a, a real comedian in a narrative movie. But we talked a lot and then I told Lissandra, so you, you are going back for the first time in French Guyana. What would you, what, how do you imagine this return? And she told me, uh, I, I really want to do a, the first voguing masterclass in Cayenne, in French Guyana. And, uh, and I went a lot to her class. I saw her as a, as a teacher, as a mother with her kids here in Paris. And mm -hmm. I knew that there would be a very big potential to film it in French Guyana. So when she told me I want to do that, I said, okay, let's go for it. I went to French Guyana and then I did another casting with uh, all the dancers you see uh, in the movie, the young one are uh, people that I met I spent time with them uh, before the shooting. So I, I, I stayed like one month and a half in French Guyana to find them and, uh, and to put them together in the movie. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, I just, um, I loved watching the process. And one thing that occurs to me about like um, going on location to French Guyana to like make this documentary film, um, French, the French Guiana, uh, Cayenne is just such a character in this film, just the way it, uh, the way that um, it's just got such a, a deep sense of place. There's, you know, I, and it, and it adds to the story I felt. Um, and, uh, and that, that uh, dance space that's got the peeling paint on the walls but yet it's still so beautiful. And the way you filmed it is so beautiful. Thank I really, you. you know, Thank I you love, very much. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, a, very, a very good DOP with me. <laughs> so we, we, we have a very, very beautiful collaboration. You know, mm -hmm. It was a great pleasure to work with. Oh, tell, tell us their name. Uh, it's Arthur Loders. And uh, it was great because uh, he lived in French Guyana like for more than 10 years. Now he lives in Paris. Mm -hmm. And so he really understood, he, he, has, he had a, a, a very deep understanding of what we were doing and the situation for LGBTQ people uh, there. And, um, and, uh, and my, uh, I don't know the, the person who did the sound, I don't know the word in English, but he was, he lived there too. So we, we were a small team, but we really knew what we were doing and what's going on during the shooting. Yeah, yeah that was, that was, uh, that was something. I just, no, I can't say enough about how, um, on how many levels your film struck me. Um, Britt, can you talk a little bit about the sense of the the sense of place, the setting of of um, a, across beyond and over? Um, this is like it's obviously it's like your neighborhood, right? It's actually not. We um we we talked a lot about um, where we wanted to to shoot this because um, Ryan is based in Boston. I'm based in Brooklyn, um, mm -hmm. so it felt very strange to sort of do this thing in one of our spaces. Um, we were trying to sort of make like, have like a neutral space to be in. Um, so we were really lucky that the film fellowship that, that I have, um, that I've worked on this film under, um, that they had a residency house that was available for the weekend. So we sort of just huddled there 
um, our crew, Ryan and I, um, just stayed in the house the entire time. It didn't really leave. There's nothing in this town in uh, Westchester, New York anyway. It's a really small town. So um, we thought it was really important to have, a, yeah, like sort of a neutral setting where we could just work on things and not have to worry about other people who are not sort of in this in this world that we're making, um, having them be involved in, in any way, um, especially because it was so intimate and we really wanted to make, you know, the crew also a part of this experience as well. We wanted to sort of limit um, the scope of, of who was involved. Right, cool. Um, so, so you hadn't been in contact with Ryan since the your eighth you broke up in the third at all yeah um we it's it's a really funny story that i wanted to be in the movie but it doesn't really fit but i actually found ryan again on instagram i was like on instagram looking at like hashtag trans fitness or something mm -hmm. and i saw this person who looked incredibly familiar and i was like is that the person i dated in middle school um so that was about maybe two maybe a year or two before I had, you know, approached Ryan with this idea of making a movie. But um, after I found him on Instagram, we sort of, you know, added each other, but didn't really have much to say to each other. Um, so it was a sort of a funny um, reunion through social media. And then when I reached out to him about this idea that I had been thinking about, he was, of course, like, I'm in, like, I'm ready, sure, um, which was not the reaction that I was expecting at all <laughs> um, after not seeing someone for, you know, over 10 years. Right. Mm -hmm. I just love the, the central thing that happens where you're talking to each other about the breakup. I just love that because that just resonates with so many things in my life, you know, mm -hmm. you know, my own, you know, um, willingness to blame myself for things <laughs> right 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 mm -hmm. and especially just like holding holding guilt and holding stuff that we don't even know that we're holding like i think that was something that i was really lucky to have a co-director noah Seamus, on this and noah sort of kept asking like reminding me of like you know why are we doing this and like what why do we even need to film this at all like there's something about um ryan that you sort of need to figure out and maybe and maybe that's what the movie is about and i was really lucky to have noah on as also an editor um so when we realized that like this moment was the the heart of it um then we sort of like worked backwards from that that breakup moment into creating the rest of the movie and um picking what what moments of that long weekend we wanted to to really highlight yeah, that was, yeah, a nice job. Um, so, um, Audrey, so this, this um, um, narrative picture that you were thinking about, is that something that you're still thinking about working on or are you on to another thing or? Um, I, I think um, it's a little, this, uh, I have the, uh, the same feeling as a Brit. I think the documentary was uh, stronger as what I could imagine. Mm -hmm. And and I, no, I think it's the same project, but it's just another form, you know, it's just changed because I worked on it like since five years. So mm -hmm. I think it's just an evolution of this project. And, and I'm really happy happy with it and and the experience with all the um, the, the people and all the young dancers was so strong so i think um, yes it, i went to the end of this project i have this feeling maybe i don't know uh, in uh, several months i i i will ha i will want to do but i think is is yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, understood. I, I kind of agree. I don't know. Um, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know how you could improve on, on that story. Um, so I think that, um, are you, are you in touch with um, any of the, any of the um, people from that film um, after the film? Are yes, you with, um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm still in touch with Lisandro. 
we were uh, we ha we had our first uh, screening uh, post uh, uh, lockdown <laughs> uh, two days ago so it was a, a great moment because all the screenings now in real uh, with real people are really precious so even in uh, online too but it's we don't because normally the the movie has to be has to release in theaters in France, so it was cancelled with uh, with COVID. But I saw Les Lissandra, yes, uh, we we saw we saw each other uh, regularly, and the young people in French Guiana, because I live in Paris, so we we keep in touch with uh, WhatsApp <laughs> as we could, and yes, we we had um, a, a very strong connection. I don't know, it, it's not some. We are not friends. We are not part of the same family, but. I don't know the uh, I try to to describe the relation we have with people we shoot and it's really it, it, it's something uh, apart it's not family it's not friends but sometimes I consider them as um, with the a strong feelings I could feel with my little brother I don't know there is something like that mm -hmm. it's uh, but it's really strong I don't know I, I couldn't put a name on it but it's it's really strong i really they they were so generous in the movie and they were so uh um they they, they really uh they, without them the movie uh, wouldn't be what it is and so i'm really uh grateful to them yeah <laughs> i love them a lot <laughs> how, long, how, how long was your was your shoot uh, it was really short. We we shoot du during uh, twelve days. Okay, so like, so it was like the the class was over that twelve days essentially. Yes, I think it was more like it was two weeks, two weeks, and we had uh, four classes with Lysandra, four uh, voguing classes, and uh, at, at the end, the little bowl we did uh, was a uh, yes was a part, but um, yes, it was really short. <laughs> No, that, yeah. I would, I would have liked to have more time, but uh. yeah, it was like really intense. Um, you had all the interviews with the with the with with those kids, and um, yeah, so I can I can definitely understand how you would like in that really intensified, short, very um, you know, I, I guess very focused period of time. You would like get pretty deep with each other. Yes, it was really deep, and I, uh, I actually I shoot like tw uh, two weeks, and then during the editing, um, some uh, images were uh, missing, uh, so uh, I went back to French Guiana with my camera to shoot some some uh, some images, uh, some footage with the young people, with the young dancers, and it was really cool to be just a. Uh, uh, just the three, the four of us, and so we went to in Cayenne, and we shoot things, and it, mm. and it was really, I really appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just I don't know how, uh, you know, yeah, a lot of just of the scenes around Cayenne were really great. Um, I love that that sunset, like at the ocean scene. Yes, yeah, that's the one I I did with um, with them because uh, we didn't have enough money to. To, to take the DOP and everyone. So my, my <laughs> producers say, so we have to do these images, but you have to do it by yourself. So, and I say, what? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a challenge. I say, okay, I go for it. I will try to do what I can. And then I just, uh, I was there like uh, four days to do this. And yeah, it was a great time. Yeah. Yeah, it was, so, yeah, like there was so, there's so like I keep repeating myself, I guess, but there are so many images from that that I just love, and a lot of it, um, a lot of it was just like um, in and around Cayenne. It's just, you know. So, anyway, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm kind of like just thinking on the fly about things that like people might be curious about about these films. Um, I think what, why don't we, why don't we like away from the films themselves? I mean, um, what, like, we'll start with Brit. What do you, um, um, do you have like a, an idea for where you want to go, like with your next movie or the movies after that? Just like in, maybe just like, what's your sense of mission about making, mm -hmm. uh, about making films? Like, yeah. 
Yeah, I can talk about that. I so so this film Across Beyond and Over is the first um, short that I made under this fellowship program um, called Creative Culture. Um, so the second film I made is called Caro Comes Out, and it's um, starting to to get into fest mostly online festivals now. Um, but but I think something that I've realized that I'm really interested in are these films um, that are sort of about process and sort of are only possible because of the act of making a movie. Um, mm -hmm. So this, I guess this idea and this like style that I've been working in kind of started um, in 2015 when I made a short film called Transience that was sort of about my own understanding of my trans identity that sort of uncovered discovered itself um, when I was making a narrative film. So I ended up scrapping that narrative film and making a film about me realizing this, this new thing about myself while making a movie. So I think from that and then Across Beyond and Over, which sort of has something similar happening, um, I'm really interested in like what happens when, when we allow our process, when we allow the, the, our creative ideas to sort of transform and become something else. Because I think that key moment of, of when it transfers is, or when it transforms, is really, really interesting and really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the short that I made after this short, Carl Comes Out, is it's about um, this Cuban-American writer who decides to come out to all of her family members in, in one weekend. And through that journey, she sort of loses you know, why she's doing this. And, and the movie is ultimately about like why this process is important for her more so than like the the process the thing itself um so i think i'm really interested in in staying in that space and doing these documentaries where um they one require like close intimacy with the subject and also um really require that the subject is sort of willing to let change happen and to let um whatever transformations whether that's you know, it's becoming a narrative film to being a documentary or um, it becomes a completely different tone and genre. Like, I think I want to stay in that space because I think there's just a lot of vulnerability and a lot of, um, yeah, like truths that come out of, of, of that process. So I'm hoping to keep doing that whenever, whenever we can shoot again in, in New York, at least. Um, bookmark on that, because that's probably where I'm going to go next. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like the, I, I like that. Um, you're, you're like um, across beyond and o over and Carl comes out are kind of in, uh, in um, conversation with each other. Mm -hmm. I love, yeah, I love that through line. And um, I, I will look for that film. Yeah. Um, so Audrey, I guess like the same question to you. I know that I, I looked I looked you up on uh, IMDb, so I know that you worked in uh, French television at one point. Is that true? And yeah, uh, I worked as an assistant director uh, during like 10 years, and now I'm more focused on my uh, own uh, project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am uh, finishing a, a short movie, uh, a narrative one, and uh, I'm co-directing a, a movie with my brother at the same time, so another one. and. Uh, uh, and in my movies, there are always questions uh, about gender or sexuality um, and, ways, and race too in, in France. Um, but I, I, I started to write a, a project in the US about a, a great uh, uh, trans woman, um, a singer, but I don't know. Uh, now it's quite difficult to, to imagine for now. Uh, um, I don't. It's it's really complicated the COVID situation for co-production, etc. So now I'm focusing on on doing maybe project in France or in Guyana, and I still writing my US documentary, but uh, with a lot of uh, of uh, questions. So uh, so I'm still working on it, but um, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Um, I, one thing that I've been like because I've been paying attention to a lot of these Q and A's, and one thing that I s seem to uh, that seems like a really obvious through line, and I found it myself in my own creative life, is that it's really kind of in a way hard to work right now because of because uh, I'm sure like with film there's the logistical issue, but I think there's something about the um, 
the isolation, which should bring out more creativity, you would think, but maybe the fact that there's just not enough to react to that, like, that's part of the process. I mean, um, yeah, I know that people like, so, like, um, there was one Q and A that had um, probably about six or seven directors from different short films together talking and almost all of them were saying, yeah, I'm not really doing anything. I just, I just don't feel it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I mean, what's your reaction to like, how are you dealing with this time from a, cre on a creative level? Yeah, I think, I think something that's been, you know, like, I think my major outlet in terms of like making films is just like being able to shoot and spend time with people, which is something that's not really possible. But what that means is that I'm sort of having to find new avenues to um, sort of say the things that I want to say. So um, I've been taking this time to, I produce a lot of shorts also as well. So I've been taking a lot of time to, um, you know, be a better producer and, and be more available and present for people that I collaborate with. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also just, you know, being a person that works in documentary, but, but also in narrative work, sort of realizing that I might be writing for a while and that's okay. Um, just because that time is, is, is great to have. And it's something that typically when I'm shooting, I'm not getting to sit down and just like write. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's, I think I felt a lot of pressure to like, produce something immediately about what is happening and especially with like um, Black Lives Matter with the moment that we're in culturally like there are so many things to say but I think everything is also very new and I think like you know creators shouldn't feel um, pressured to sort of like produce because there's a lot of things happening and we're all at home. I think like the space for reflection is also so valuable and so needed. I think the projects that are going to come out, um, you know, in the next year are going to be really, really interesting because they're either going to come from places of deep reflection or um, they're going to be about, they're going to say something really critically about where we are now and how we got here. So I, I'm looking forward to sort of the, what emerges from this, but I think we're in sort of a, a strange space where, you know, you know, you could either be really productive or you could just be, be thinking and I think thinking is a good place to be. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I mean, I feel like just thinking is part of being productive. You had like not all of the work happens. Um, well, in my case with uh, with my com with my com keyboard, it's a, it, a lot of it's up here. I, mm -hmm. You feel the same way. Um, so how about you, Audrey? How are you dealing with uh, the isolation of this time? Um, during the, the lockdown, because uh, here, uh, we, the, the lockdown is over since I don't know, like two months, something like that. Uh, I, I couldn't write anything good uh, because um, uh, as uh, Brit said, uh, I, I realized that I really need to see people and to hear stories or to, I don't know, to uh, being just, and I really like to be alone <laughs> to write, but I need people to tell me stories or the energy or something. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I shoot uh, a lot of images in uh, French Guyana like 10 years ago. And I didn't do anything with these images because I didn't have time to, uh, to edit it. And uh, during the lockdown, I edited uh, like a short movie with all these images. And I don't know, I spent like uh, one month and a half to edit it. And, and this was okay for me to to work with images, but just writing. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I didn't feel it because uh, it was a strange, a strange period because uh, I, I decided to not to look the social media, etc. because there were some things like you have to do, you have to do, everyone was like, I'm writing so much, I'm doing so, I'm, I don't know, everyone was like, uh, 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 my, my lockdown is so great. I'm doing like a lot of banana cakes and everybody was like, and was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and, and uh, I'm writing so much, uh, three new projects. And I was like, okay, just stop watching it. <laughs> and then I, it was a, a, a very strange and deep period. I, I didn't want to like, 
capitalize on it or I don't know just um, just living it and spend time with myself I, I, I watch a lot of movies because I have a, a, a big screen a big a video projector I don't know the word but uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I watch a lot a lot of movies and I read a lot of things about cinema and uh, I um, yes it was what I, what I did and, and then after the lockdown I, I could uh, do the post-production of my movie so I, I was with a technician and it was so good to 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 create but with other people I, I don't know because I, I did like two movies um, and a lot of uh, traveling with Fabulous so I, I didn't have to just uh, come down and uh... <laughs> right. mm -hmm. so what, what, what movies have you been watching? A lot, a lot, like uh, every uh, a lot of movies that I didn't have time to see, but uh, I, don't, yeah, and I, 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 uh, I, I watch uh, all the Miner Minervini movies, the documentaries, and I was like in love with these movies, and uh, at the same time I watched movie of uh, Siagin Snef, uh, a Russian director. And I was crazy. It was like I made, an, I rewatched all the Tarkovsky's movie, and it was a nonsense. <laughs> I was like, ah, I need movies, <laughs> and it was really great. I spent a lot of time to say, okay, now it's a, it's a, the Russian period, and then uh, Minervini's moment. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> but it was really, I um. Uh, I acknowledge that I the movie it's my refuge. It's the it's really a, I, I couldn't live without. A, if I don't write, I have to watch it. It's a, like an obsession and and the the place I can feel. Oh, it's good. And I watch a lot like of, of um, uh, musical like uh, all Americans musical. Uh, you know, um, like. Uh, uh, Singing in the rain and etc. Or Jack Demi's, uh, you know, music. And I was like, oh, it's so. Comfort, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so uh, same question to you, Britt. <laughs> I have been on a mission to watch um, like 400 movies this year, and I've really gotten a jump start since we're at home. Um, mm -hmm. So, I'm I watched like all of Cheryl Dunier's early work like before watermelon woman which was like i probably should have watched that a long time ago just thinking about the kind of work that i make um because you know she's in her work she's like toying with is this fiction or is this not and it's like i should have been i should have been watched this um but i i agree like movies are just like they have really saved me during being at home because um it's just so nice to watch things that i would have put off forever watching and to watch things that have been recommended to me for years. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, it's so nice to be able to just, you know, say, I'm going to watch two movies or three movies today. And that's <laughs> what my day is going to be. Um, so, and I think it's helped so much with like, you know, being, being creative in new, in new ways. You know, I've been not able to watch a lot of stuff and have just been making shorts back to back to back. Um, and I think like the thing, whatever I end up, making next that is um, directed by me is going to look really different, I think, because of all the, you know, new influences and new things that I'm consuming, which I think is, is great. Yeah, no, I think this, you know, you're making me, you're both making me feel really optimistic about what comes next. I think we're, we're going to be in this little bit of a fallow time because it's like kind of impossible, but like, yeah, I definitely, based on, you know, based on my own experience and also based on what you're saying, I feel like the next period in movies, like once we can all go back to working on them, it's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty great a, a pretty great time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there anything that we haven't covered that either of you would like to like to say? Let's start with Audrey. Uh, a Brit, if you want to say something, you can go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, uh. Maybe just uh, 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 when I talk about Fabulous, uh, you know, uh, in French Guiana, the, the, the COVID situation is, is really um, uh, alarming. I find it's really uh, 
uh, it worries me a lot and um, so I think a lot uh, to uh, to the young dancers and to everyone I, I work with in French Guyana because um, because it's really yes it's it's really um, it's really bad what happened mm -hmm. there mm. yeah um, yeah I don't know a lot about about what happens in French Guiana, but if they're having um, if they're having this the kinds of trouble we are, <laughs> it's it's pretty bad here. It's really scary here. Yeah. Um, and um, and with less resources there, I'm sure it is pretty scary. I I wish all of uh, all of the people that we saw in in uh, fabulous and uh, well everybody there. Um, all the best um, and uh, so thanks for thanks for making that point and it's worth thinking about um, so Britt did you have an answer to the to the, er the earlier question <laughs> yeah um, I guess I guess when I when I screen this this movie um, I sort of like to a, a big part of, of this movie was sort of like I wanted to see more, you know, trans mask rep representation and I wanted to make a narrative about that and it ultimately became what it became. But I think that's sort of the, the power of um, just having more representation. Like, mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, I just think that like the more and more we can um, tell trans stories that are, you know, beyond what we're seeing now, whether that's something that we can imagine or not imagine now, I think um, that that is so, so important. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like this movie could have easily been like me and Ryan talking about trans representation, but there was ultimately something there that was that was more important. And I think the more trans creators, the more trans storytellers that get that opportunity just to like, put something on the screen, like the, the better, you know, we'll be, we'll be in a much better place. And um, I'm hopeful that we, we are getting there um, because every, you know, every festival season, I get to see more and more amazing um, and diverse and different shorts. So um, I think we're in a really exciting place. I think so too. I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, new stories coming out, you know, things that like are from different points of view than like, um, than like you would expect uh, that we've all come to expect from like the kind of tropish way that trans films have been made in the past. Mm -hmm. um, new stories to be told, new experiences to be related. And um, I think this is, yeah, I think it's a, a I've, I'm glad that it's kind of opening up and we're yeah. getting more of, more of a vision on screen of what it, what it means to be trans day to day, every day of our lives. Yeah. So um, I think that's um, all that I had. Um, I want to, you know, thanks again for your movies and thanks for this conversation. It's been really great. Um, and uh, good luck in your next projects. I'll be, we'll be looking for them. <laughs> um, and um, I guess that's about it. Um, so thank you, Britt, and thank you, Audrey. Um, it's been great meeting you and great talking to you. Thank you so much. And thanks for putting together these blocks of films and putting all these films together and uh, having them available online so that people can actually watch even though we're, we're at home. So thank you as well. You're welcome. <laughs>